Last year, I gained over 100,000 followers on Instagram, which is actually crazy. But as we all know, Instagram is always changing. Some types of content performs better than others, but I'm actually still seeing a good amount of growth as well as my content is performing very well. So in today's video, I wanna break down my strategy for 2024, and I'm gonna share exactly what I'm doing on Instagram and what I'm looking to switch up in the coming months. Now, before we get too far into this video, be sure to go follow me over on Instagram at Johnny Hochstetler. That way you guys can kind of follow along with some of the examples I'll be talking about. And then as always, be sure to drop this video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel as well. We are on the road to 100K and we're actually starting to get pretty close. So make sure you're subscribed. So with all that being said, let's dive into the first piece of my strategy for 2024. So first up, reels are still king. Now at this point, I think the last couple of videos that I've covered talking about Instagram, reels have always kind of been on top. And I would say that is still the case. I mean, even if you're just scrolling through Instagram, I would say at least, I would say like 75 5% of content is still videos. So breaking down how I'm approaching Instagram Reels right now, I would still say the faster paced, quick cuts, trending sounds type of Instagram Reels are performing best. If you guys are familiar with my content, I really am a big fan of overlays. I actually have my own overlay pack available down in the description below. It's kind of a nice way to spice up content, but I have been exploring a few different types of videos for Instagram Reels. Some are like the higher produced types of videos. Like recently I did a video for Herman Miller and I don't even know how many different angles or cuts there were in that video, but that really helped make it feel a lot more produced and a lot higher quality. And guess what? It performed really well. The problem with doing just videos like that is that they take a good amount of time, not only to shoot, but also it takes a lot of time to edit. So I've kind of been exploring some simpler styles of videos as well. Like for example, a few months ago when I picked up the Apple Vision Pro, I put out a couple different types of videos. One was like an unboxing that was higher produced with a ton of different angles, cuts, etc. And then I also put out a second video that was literally, I think it's seven seconds long and it was one shot filmed on my iPhone, no editing, no text, no anything. And guess what? The video that's higher produced is sitting at 164,000 views in my one shot, one take video with the iPhone is sitting at 189,000 views. So does that mean I'm only gonna film videos with my iPhone that are one clip? No, absolutely not. But I think mixing in some of those is still totally fine because having the higher produced style videos kind of show what my content is about or what my page is capable of. And then those other kind of easier videos can just kind of help supplement to help keep you consistent and always be able to put out content. Another thing I always try to do with my Instagram Reels, if I can, is find a trending song. And now Instagram actually makes it really easy. So if you scroll on your Reels feed, if you find any song that has that little upwards arrow, if you click on that and then click the trending sound up top, like you see how that says trending and the number right there. If you click on that, it actually takes you to a page showing the top 50 trending songs right now on the platform. I always try to find an Instagram sound that's trending with that arrow up that's under 10,000 uses already. To me, that kind of gives you the best runway to have trending audio for the longest amount of time. So I'm glad that Instagram actually finally added that feature so you can see what songs are actually trending. And I always try to implement that if I can. So I could go on about Instagram Reels all day long. Maybe I'll make an entire dedicated video to just that. If you guys would be interested, let me know down below. But yes, Instagram Reels should be part of your strategy. They're definitely part of mine. And I think at this point, we can assume they are here to stay. Now, moving on from that, let's talk about photos. And guess what? Photos are back. Now, this might be a controversial topic and some people might agree, some people might not agree, but this is something that I'm actually wanting to implement more and more with my own strategy. A few of my friends have been absolutely crushing it with recent photo dumps. And I think we're kind of in the photo dump era right now where, you know, people are posting like weekly dumps or monthly dumps or quarter dumps or even like the life lately carousels. And now with the added feature from Instagram, Instagram where you can add music onto a photo post, they actually seem to be performing very, very well. A year ago, I think I would tell you, hey, you know, if you're gonna do a photo post, you should have at least three photos. These days, I would say try to get closer to that 10 number mark if you're going to do a photo post, but I would for sure do at least eight plus. I always try to lead with my strongest photo and kind of have my strongest photos at the front, the middle, and the end. That way it kind of keeps people entertained throughout the entire thing, and you can hope to really draw people in. So if you've been sleeping on photo posts or you just kind of assume photos in general are dead. I'm here to tell you a lot of people are seeing a lot of success
success right now with photo posts specifically. So if you haven't been trying them out, I would definitely recommend doing so and try to implement them into your strategy. Next up, engage with your community. Now this one kind of sounds obvious, but it's something I really hang my hat on. Overall, I would say my content performs very well. I get a good amount of comments and I truly put a lot of time and effort in making sure I respond back to people. Now, of course, sometimes it might be overwhelming to respond to every single person, but I do think it goes a long way if you can at least respond to some comments or at least, you know, drop some hearts on some ones that really hit home. One, if other people are gonna be taking their precious time commenting and showing support on my content, I kind of feel like I at least owe them something in return because it really does help me out. But also, you know, if someone's going to comment on a piece of content and they look down the comments and they see that you never interact with anyone, I kind of think that that makes people feel like maybe there's not a point to actually comment. If people are gonna support you, the least you can do is try to respond to a good amount of people back. Yes, it does take some time, but you know, just set aside a few minutes here or there, maybe it's every day, every week, whenever. And I think this is a key piece as to how I've built such a strong community compared to other people that are my size. So definitely recommend. Now real quick, I wanna take a second to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is actually myself. Now in case you guys didn't know, I have an online digital store. It'll be the first link down in the description below. Now on that store, I have a few assets that I use on all of my content. I have my Lightroom preset packs, which I literally use on every single photo, including Instagram stories. I have my overlay pack, which I use on every single Instagram reel I've made over the past year. I actually love those and by far the most people have picked those up. I also offer a video LUT, which is what I color grade all my footage with. And then pertaining to this video, I actually offer an ebook on my store as well that breaks down my Instagram strategy even more. And I share even more tips and tricks in that ebook. There's a ton of different videos and just packed with a ton of different info. If you guys pick up anything over there, be sure to tag me. I am very confident in those assets because like I said, I genuinely use them on all of my content and it's the best way to show support for me and the channel and it helps me make videos like this for you guys. First link down in the description, let's go ahead and get back to the video. So next up is post consistently. Now consistently is gonna be different for every single person, right? If you're looking at a full-time content creator, they probably are gonna post a little bit more consistently than someone like myself who has a full-time creative job. I do all this personal content stuff just on the side and I absolutely love it, but you know, there's only so many hours in a day or in a week. Now, a lot of people I think get ahead of themselves and think, okay, I'm gonna post every single day this week. The first day you get something up, you're feeling great. And then guess what, day two or day day three comes and maybe you don't get a chance to, or maybe you fall behind and then all of a sudden that snowballs and you feel like you can't do it at all. So I would kind of break it down, take a step back and look at yourself and your own schedule and figure out, okay, what's a realistic amount of times that I can post this week? Maybe you start out with just once a week. And then once you master that, you move on to twice a week and kind of so on and so forth. I myself right now, because I've been putting so much of my time and effort into long form content, I right now have only been able to be consistent enough to put out about two to three posts a week which actually for myself with my current goals fits perfectly. I'm really trying to chase down that 100K plaque for YouTube and I'm really enjoying this long form content a lot. And then also to add on to that, I should mention batch shooting. This is something that I've talked about before on this channel. I think I owe you guys a dedicated video to this, but a very important way that I stay consistent with my content is to batch shoot some content. So a lot of times it might be a weekend day or an evening night, whenever, where I will take some time to plan out a few videos and then in one sitting, I will film a few pieces of content. That way throughout the rest of the week, when maybe my schedule moves around a little bit more, I can just edit those pieces of content whenever time allows. But at least for me, it's more of a hurdle to actually do the filming. You have to set up lights, you have to be in a certain outfit, you gotta set up your camera. So if I can kind of do that all in one session, it's a lot easier for me to edit content around the rest of my schedule that can be a little bit more chaotic. So take a look at your schedule, figure out what makes sense for you. Don't compare your consistency to other people everyone's situation's different, but I would say figure out what that consistency looks like for you and try to stick to that. Now, next up, let's talk about the broadcast channel. Now, if you aren't familiar with this, this is something that Instagram implemented, I don't know, a handful of months ago now. I think at this point it's rolled out to everyone, but there's something called a broadcast channel. And essentially what it is, is it's like a one way kind of Instagram DM. No one else can talk in there but yourself. But essentially what it is for me at least, is kind of like the behind the scenes of all my content. And the way that I look at it is 
is it's really my true dedicated community. These people are like the true ride or dies. In this broadcast channel, I share a few different types of content, but it really is kind of the behind the scenes look at everything else I'm doing. So sometimes I ask for opinions on a YouTube thumbnail. Sometimes I share, you know, just an iPhone clip that I film right then, just kind of giving people like a little status update on stuff I'm working on. I've even done like a few different giveaways just in my broadcast channel. So it's actually a really cool thing that Instagram implemented for your community. Not everyone has to join it, but to me, you know, if I'm looking at myself and how I follow some other creators or just different people on Instagram, if I'm really into someone's content or maybe it's a brand's content, I want to get as much out of them as I can. So seeing little tidbits of behind the scenes content or really any sort of extras is actually a really cool thing. And sometimes even if I have a really cool Instagram reel or post that I want to get a lot of hype on, I will share that over to my broadcast channel and ask for people, you know, if they missed out on it, go show some love on it. And it's kind of just another way to connect with the community. And so far it's worked out really well for me. Now, next up, let's talk about value. And actually I was just talking to my homie Big E yesterday talking about how much value is important with your own content. I encourage you to kind of take a step back and try to look at your page or the content you're putting out from a different perspective, right? And if something maybe isn't performing how you want to, or maybe you're trying to think of some new ideas, ask yourself this question. What value is this piece of content adding to my audience? Sometimes all you need it to do is be entertainment and that's totally fine. Sometimes it's education. Maybe I'm making an Instagram reel about a new MacBook that just dropped and I wanna talk about my thoughts and feelings on it. That can be a really important piece to have people kind of gain your trust and want to tap into your content because they know you're gonna bring some value to them. So education is a great one. Another way that I've found success bringing value to my community is through motivation or inspiration. I love finding these different motivational quotes that hit home with me and then kind of layering them in over top of my own content because I know if it's going to hit home with me, I know it's going to hit home with someone else as well. And I like being able to put my own spin on it. Sometimes you find like a motivational quote from like an athlete or someone in the sports world. So I kind of take that and then implement it into my community and my content, which is more for, you know, different photographers, different content creators, so on and so forth. And I've actually found a lot of success with that style of content for myself. So everyone's gonna be different, right? The type of content you make is gonna be different than someone else's, at least it should be. So I would encourage you, you know, if you are thinking of new concepts or new content ideas, or wondering why your content isn't performing the way it should, ask yourself that question, what value is this bringing to other people? And a lot of times that kind of helps me figure things out. Now to wrap up this video, I wanna talk about a few things I'm going to be trying out with my Instagram strategy and things that I kind of see potentially changing or things you should try out here in the future. So number one, is less IG stories. So there's this thing going around right now and it's actually accurate based off my testing. Instagram stories, right? It used to be successful by posting a ton of them every single day. A year ago or a year and a half ago, I would tell you that you should be posting at least like three to five, if not more Instagram stories every single day. But there's this new thing going around right now that if you wait for your Instagram stories to run out, you know, you post a photo, it runs out after 24 hours, you let it run all the way out and then give it, you know, a couple hours or something. And then you post a brand new Instagram story, I'm telling you my story views have at least doubled. Some people are saying they're seeing the most success by only posting one story a day after the other ones run out. So what I've been doing for myself is let's say there's a day where I have a few different things I want to share to my stories. I will let those ones from the past day run all the way out. And then all like in a few minutes, I will post like those five Instagram stories or however many all at the same time. That first one gets a giant spike in views. It seems to be a pretty drastic fall off after that first one. So I don't know. It's something to look out for. Maybe this this will evolve or change down the line anyways. But at least right now today when I'm filming this, let the old ones run out, post one Instagram story. You better make sure it's important. And I'm getting at least double views right now. So this is interesting. We'll see how this evolves down the line. And then the other thing is longer IG reels. So if you guys are familiar with TikTok, right? TikTok has allowed, you know, longer videos for a little while now. First it was 10 minutes, then it was 20 minutes. I think right now you can post a 30 minute video on TikTok. I've actually tested a couple and they perform awful. I don't know who's watching 30 minute video on TikTok. But anyways, that's not the point. TikTok allows longer videos. I've actually seen some success with myself posting videos that are like between five and 10 minutes, which is actually kind of crazy. But even the way that a lot of people are consuming content now is they want some slower paced content in general. Slower paced content seems to be working better for me at least over on TikTok and then Instagram Reels. Currently still that faster paced content is better, but even I've kind of noticed how myself has been consuming content lately. Usually I'm kind of scrolling on TikTok late at night while I'm brushing my teeth 
teeth or getting ready for bed or just kind of relaxing. And I don't want to be constantly scrolling nonstop. So if I actually come across a piece of content from a creator I really enjoy and it's over like three minutes, I actually prefer that. I can set my phone down. I can listen to them, watch them, whatever. And I don't have to be scrolling every 20 seconds. So I've started implementing a little bit of that style of content over on Instagram. But currently Instagram only allows 90 second Instagram reels. But in case you didn't know, if you post a video just as a video post, it can be longer than 90 seconds and it still just pushes it over to the Instagram reel feed. I don't know exactly how this affects the algorithm or anything on your piece of content, but in my experience, they actually perform pretty similar. So I have tried a few pieces of slower content that's longer than 90 seconds over on IG and they've done really well for me. I do think there is that craving for slower paced, longer content. I think that's why so many people are focusing on YouTube right now. We had like two years of nonstop in your face, high intensity content. And at some point, people are gonna want something a little bit different. So I would maybe try out some of this for yourself, check in the next month or couple months and see how this type of content performs. That is a major piece of having success on IG or really any platform. Different styles of content is always gonna do better than others. So you kinda just gotta keep up with the game and that's just part of finding success on these platforms. So guys, that is my Instagram strategy for 2024. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys have found anything else that I left out of this video that's really helping you find success right now. But like I said, this is always an evolving thing. Every type of platform and content in general is going to change. So you gotta stay on top of it. You gotta try new things and see what works for you and what doesn't. So guys, that's gonna be it for me in today's video. Be sure to drop this video a thumbs up. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel as well. And if you're not following me on IG by now, I don't know what you're doing. But I will catch you guys in the next video very, very soon. Peace, guys. Peace.